Here is yet another lightweight distribution that you can use on older hardware. I'm speaking about Peppermint OS 4. Now, I have had a number of requests in the past that I have a look at Peppermint OS, and this is just one of those things that I never got around to. Well, we're going to have a look at it right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. According to the website, the very bare minimum system requirement would be to have 192 megs of RAM on your old hardware, although the minimum recommendation is 512 or for the best experience of 1 gig of RAM and of course um, an x86 or x86-64 processor for this distribution. Okay, well, here it is, and this is not the way that this distribution appears when you first install it. While I thought the dark background looked kind of cool, I didn't think that the theme quite matched it. So without installing anything, I just went into the tools and tweaked the colors, and I came up with a, a theme, and uh, I feel this is probably a little bit more appropriate for, you know, this dark thing they have going on, as you'll see here. Okay, and uh, for instance, you know, when I open up the file manager, you know, I think this a little this matches a little bit better than the white theme that they had on that. So, but other than that, I didn't do anything else to uh, adjust this. If you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, you have a, a logout button, you have the time, a volume control, internet, you also have a battery indicator for those of you who are plugged into a laptop, and you get two desktop switcher, or you get a desktop switcher to switch between the two desktops that are available. Okay, and then on the bottom left, you have your uh, menu here, and there are a number of programs that you get with this. It comes with a firewall, a calculator, character map, uh, a disk utility. This uses the lightweight PC Man file manager that you're seeing up here on the screen. Uh, there's a file search, screenshot, terminal, and a lightweight text editor. Now, the games that this comes with, this uses a program called ICE. And basically what this does is it allows you to um, configure websites, I believe, as applications. So for instance, if I open up this uh, 2D, 3D chess program, this actually points to a web page where uh, you can actually run this and use it like an application. And uh, that is done in uh, done from uh, this application here called ICE. And uh, there are a number of applications that you're going to see in here that uh, use that use uh, HTML. And I think that's one of the things they were touting about this in distribution is that some of the programs that you're seeing on this are cloud based. Okay, so you do have an assortment of games, some graphics tools, and this is something that I found interesting. Uh, now, you have the document viewer, and then this is this editor is an online graphics editor, and I even had a chance to play around a little bit in it. Uh, this looks similar to uh, Adobe Fireworks, or Macromedia Fireworks. Uh, that's my favorite application. I thought this was kind of cool, and this has a familiar layout. Um, but the thing is, this is all cloud-based, so pretty much, you know, if you're working on graphics, that sort of thing, uh, I have no idea whether the person at the other end where this application resides, if they're going to be using my graphics that I'm creating on this thing. I don't know if I want that, but at any rate, um, looks like a neat little program here. All right, moving right along. Uh, you get an image viewer and simple scan. In Internet, you get... Uh, Transmission for all of your BitTorrent needs, uh, Chromium web browser, Dropbox, and this is that ICE program here. Okay, and you can see here that there are these programs that are already uh, on the menu. You can add or you can remove programs just by entering an URL, the URL name, uh, where in the menu do you want to put that item. You can select an icon 
or you can uh, try to use the uh, you know you can use the sites icon itself. So that's pretty neat, neat nifty little feature. Okay, and then of course uh, in Office, um, the again these are just uh, links using ICE, so there isn't anything installed on the computer itself. In sound and video, you do get a media player, a music player, and a sound mixer. Okay, and then of course a number of system tools to get the most out of the system. And then of course all of your preferences, and I changed uh, all the graphics on the screen just by uh, going in a customized look and feel, for instance. And it uses Orion Peppermint, and all I did was just uh, change the colors. This is the original color scheme that it used, and I used my own custom colors. Let me close that because I don't want to apply it. But that's that's all there was to it. Now, let me uh, get into the meat and potatoes of this. In your software manager here, there are also some packages that you can get for this. They've created a bundle of meta packages, which will allow you to download a suite of applications for whatever niche that you may have. Uh, this uses the Mint Software Manager, and if you just go into Featured right here, you will see as you scroll down that they have a Build Tools package, great for if you're compiling programs that you download off the internet. You have the Graphic Arts Pack, which will download a number of applications. This uh, will download Blender, it will download uh, OpenShot Video Editor, and a number of other tools. You also get the GIMP and that sort of thing, some kids utilities and education games and that sort of thing. You get a network package if you want to install those. You can download and install the Office Pack. And then of course there's a Photography Pack as well. So that was pretty neat that they decided to include that. And I do mention on their website that if you need any uh, proprietary drivers that they have that tool, but they don't tell you where it is. So let me show you how to get to that. References, software and updates. Okay, and this is where uh, you manage your uh, repositories, other software, updates, authentication, and then you go into additional drivers and this is where you can download those proprietary drivers for instance if you have an ATI or uh, an NVIDIA card or uh, any kind of a proprietary uh, driver that you may need for your network they would be located here and would give you the opportunity to install them there so what does Peppermint OS bring to the table that others don't well I like it simply because of its simplicity this distribution has no bloatware, and it's got some good ideas behind it as well. It is designed to be lightweight to run on your legacy hardware, and it's designed to be a minimum Linux install so that you can put the applications you want on it, rather than downloading a large distribution that's out there and then having to uninstall half of it because most of those applications you're not going to use. It looks like we've got a winner on our hands here. Mm -hmm.